Hey everybody and welcome to Meals with Melissa where I create dishes that work for you that are actually healthier versions of things that you love. So, you know, one of the things I discovered I loved as a kid was quiche. Now, of course, you know, the classic quiche comes with a crust and then an egg kind of frittata looking, tasting thing, um, and usually made with Swiss cheese. Now, today we're gonna do a little different than that. Um, we're gonna make it crustless, which makes it a lot more lower carb, uh, but it has great texture. It's gonna be super yummy. And you know what? It uses the rest of the zucchini that is left over from this summer. So it was really funny. And looking for this, there was a little blip about how one of these days was leave a extra zucchini on your neighbor's porch day. I didn't even know that thing kind of thing existed, but you can come leave it on mine because I will use it. And to be honest, I prefer to use somebody's homegrown zucchini versus the store-bought version. So um, I apologize, I know it's a little dark in here today, but it's we've had some thunderstorms. It's been a little weird over the night. So it's a little darker in my kitchen today, but we'll just go with it. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So I pre totally prepared everything today. I prepared my, or preheated my oven to 350 because sometimes I forget to do that. Um, and today, although it, call, it calls for a nine and a half inch pie dish, like I, and I have a, a glass one haunting around here somewhere, I'm actually gonna make them a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make them kind of like almost a jumbo cupcake size because that makes it a way easier to divide it into portions and also to freeze them if I need to and take them, defrost them and take them with me to work if I want to. So we're gonna use this today. So I'm actually going to spray my pan with a little, you can grease it, but I'm going to use some avocado oil spray. Um, I've gotten my family away from using canola oil or vegetable oil because the research that I've done shows that it's really not a healthy option for you. So I've already sprayed this, it's totally ready to go. Now, I've actually gotten everything ready to go because honestly, all you have to do is throw it in the mixer, mix it up, and shove it in the oven. So, um, what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna use, I'm having my recipe, par usual, um, but if you wanna make a full version, that way, like I said, make some extra and you have it ready to go. I would say that probably the biggest issue for most people is the amount of time that they have for preparation, but you can make a huge batch of these and your whole family can eat on them for a week if you want to. So I'm gonna put three whole eggs in my um, mixing bowl here. Now, you'll notice that this is not low fat. I am no longer, and haven't been for a while, a fan of low fat um, because it's completely unfortunate that we've been steered into that whole low fat garbage direction. Um, the problem with that is that we end up eating way too many carbs and that, to be honest, is the reason that we are struggling with obesity in our nation. So three whole eggs, Again, this is a half recipe. I will post the full recipe so it'll make it a whole lot easier for you. I've already shredded my zucchini, what we had left. Now, the thing that you have to do on this or it just turns out way too wet is you have to squeeze the excess moisture out of your zucchini. Now, one of these days I am going to go out and invest in a cheesecloth, which I have not currently done. I don't know why, like it just hasn't happened. So it takes me a few minutes to get that done. Um, but I have squeezed, you know, gotten most of the excess moisture out of there. Otherwise, it's just too wet of an ingredient um, for this particular recipe. Um, same thing, I, I know I need one. I know I need a cheesecloth. I, in the last few weeks, I've needed it more than once, so I just need to go buy one uh, just to make that a whole lot easier. So, again, throwing two cups of shredded zucchini into my mix. On top of that, I'm going to add um, almond flour. Now, again, I just get this at my local grocery store. It's super easy. Um, if you don't have any locally, check your health food stores. They're going to carry it. Or you can actually grind your own. That is an option. So the full recipe version actually calls for three quarters cup, which is kind of hard to have, but <laughs> we're going to do it anyway. So I'm going to throw in a fourth of a cup and then half of a fourth of a cup, right? Uh, yeah, it just makes it, it, it's doable, right? And if I'm a little over or a little under, you know, no big deal because um, it's just, it's not really gonna change the texture enough to matter, so, all right. To that, I'm also going to add one fourth, or one eighth cup, sorry, which is also known as two tablespoons of coconut flour. So you've got a little bit of almond flour, but also of coconut flour. You can't do a direct crossover from any recipe that has regular all-purpose flour especially to coconut flour because it is way drier and will absorb much, much more liquid. So again, you're gonna have to either use one that's been tempered to, you know, to work with or substituted already to work with coconut flour, um, or you're gonna have to do some major testing and trying to see what works for you. 
All right, so we've already added our flowers. I'm also to that gonna add a half a cup of shredded cheese. Now, I prefer to shred my own. I don't like to get pre-shredded because for some odd reason, the texture, it just seems to be drier, um, not quite as blendable and meltable, um, which is kind of gross to me. To that, I'm also going to add, now, yesterday when I made these, and they turned out great, because I'm gonna show you what they look like when I'm done. Yesterday, I used coconut oil, so it calls for either or. Um, so yesterday, I used one fourth cup melted coconut oil. My kids said it was just, it was almost too, it just tasted too much like coconut. So today, the alternative is we're gonna use butter. This is grass-fed butter. Um, you could also use ghee, which is clarified butter. Um, I'm using what I have at the house. My one daughter kept calling it vegan butter. I'm like, it's not vegan, it's grass-fed. <laughs> butter is not vegan. Okay, so to that, I'm also going to add um, one tablespoon of freshly cut up, chopped up parsley. And fortunately, I can find this really easily in my town, um, even our local Walmart, which is not my favorite grocery store, carries that in small containers so that I don't have to invest in, in a great big amount. I'm also going to add one tablespoon of grated Parmesan. Okay, you can use shredded, but I think grated goes a little bit further for what it is. Um, I'm also going to add one, uh, let's see, half a tablespoon, which I do not have here, so we're gonna kinda just measure it out. Half a tablespoon of uh, minced dry onion. There you go, minced dry onion. So I have a tablespoon here, so I'm just gonna, I do have a half one, I'm just not gonna dig for it. Okay, there we go. I'm also going to add, and I forgot to grab the garlic, which I will do in just a second, um, one fourth teaspoon of dried basil. Woo -woo, got it. And like I said, I taste tested these yesterday because you don't want to make sure that they turn out. Every once in a while I get um, a recipe that just does not work out like I think it's supposed to. Um, this one works great. And you know what? I love eggs. So anyway, I love omelets. I love over easy, like I just love it all. I love it on hamburgers, you name it, I love a good egg. Okay, I'm gonna grab my minced, I, I'm gonna use already minced garlic, um, just because A, I don't wanna have to mince it myself, and B, I've got a great big container of it from Costco, but let me grab it real quick. All right. I honestly have quite the loaded fridge, but that's because I have a big family in my house. Okay, so I'm going to do one clove of minced garlic. So that, for this particular already minced, is a half a teaspoon. I'm just gonna put a little extra in there because I love garlic, not gonna lie. Okay, and then last but not least, I'm going to add one fourth teaspoon of salt. So I'm adding it all together because honestly, it's gonna mix up and it's gonna be perfect. I don't have to add wet and dry ingredients separately. Um, it's a little different than if we were actually baking any sort of pastry, which I also love to do. All right, so I'm gonna add the salt. It's all together in there. Now today I'm actually using my paddle for the mixing, just because I just that's just what I wanted to use. I find it just easier to clean up when I'm done. So I'm gonna throw this all in my really noisy, for some strange reason, KitchenAid mixer. It'll take two seconds to mix it up. All right, I'm gonna mix it, and I'm gonna grab actually my ice cream scooper, believe it or not, because it makes it easier to scoop it into the the tin that I have prepared. So let me mix that and let me grab my scooper. Just grabbing things out of the dishwasher because I used some of it last night. All right, I'm also gonna scrape down the sides. I just wanna make sure that all of the almond flour and the coconut flour gets mixed in evenly. So I'm going to grab just a rubber scraper. I'm gonna take one second, turn it off, scrape it all down to make sure that it's getting mixed all together. Don't you hate that when you mix something and then you take it out, put it into the pan and realize the whole bottom of it's still powdered or dry gradients that didn't get mixed together? You don't want that to happen. So, there we go. And my gorgeous KitchenAid. There we go. A couple years ago I bought this for myself because my smaller KitchenAid was kind of having some issues. That thing worked forever. I had that, the small, it's like the four quart, whatever. 
I had that thing for probably 18, 19 years before I bought this. Um, but you know, I like to cook and bake so much that I decided to buy a bigger one and it's worked, it's worked great. I got a good deal on it, so I'm totally okay with that. But it's just for some strange reason, super noisy. Have, do any of you have this bigger size? It's like five quart, it just tends to be a little noisy. I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter because usually nobody's here when I'm baking in my kitchen anyway, because I usually kick everybody out. Okay, so I'm just using a scooper. I use this for all kinds of things, cookies, whatnot. Um, yes, it's ice cream scooper, but that's not usually what it gets used for. I don't eat a whole lot of ice cream. Um, and when I do, I have discovered vegan ice cream is actually a better option for me because I am completely lactose intolerant. So I discovered that on my trip to New York this last month, which was amazing. Okay, so this is going to make four, maybe five. I think I made four yesterday. So we're gonna stick with that because I'm doing the exact same recipe that I tried this, tested this out on. So again, if you know you could use different cheeses, I followed the recipe pretty much like um, it came, just because I didn't want to make too many changes and not have it turn out. All right, what I just do with my rubber scraper, in just a minute I'll show you what it's going to turn out like. I'm going to throw these in the oven. By the way, do not eat them when they're super hot. A, you will burn your tongue, which is never fun. Um, and B, once they cool off a little bit, their texture sets up a little bit different. I highly recommend you wait till they've cooled off a little bit. So, if you're putting it into a nine and a half inch pie plate, which is you know the classic way of serving quiche, um, you're gonna cook it for about 45 to possibly 60 minutes. Um, just you know, depending on where you put it in the oven. I'm actually gonna put mine on a little bit lower of a rack. Uh, because I want the bottom to crust over and bake over just a little bit more than it did yesterday. So here's what it looks like going into the oven. And I'm gonna put that in in just a second, but let me show you what it's going to turn out like. For this size, I cooked it about 30 to 35 minutes, but what I discovered was it was a little wet at the bottom. So I am gonna lower the rack and I'm gonna cook it for the full 35. Check it, see how it looks, possibly cook it. Obviously I don't wanna overcook it, but I do want it to be you know, done through the center. So, um, making sure that I tell you all the things I need to tell you. Um, and then when you're done, remove it from the rack, cool it a little bit. Um, and then of course, like I said, you can put it in airtight containers and store it in your fridge or freezer, or you can just eat them. They're pretty awesome. Um, so here's how it's going to look again. I did mine in the little tins. And so here's how it turned super cute. Like it looks like a muffin, right? Such a great option for portion control, whether it's the bigger size, like we're doing the oversized muffin or cupcake tin, or whether it's regular size, it just makes it super simple. You don't have to weigh it out, measure it out, whatever, whatever. You can just throw it in and go. So if you try any of these recipes, I would love to know what your opinion is. How did it turn out? How did it work for you? Is there a recipe that works great for your family? We'd love to know. I get my best ideas from you guys. So try it out. You may also message me directly on Facebook Messenger. I do respond. If you have a question, comment, or if you have a recipe that will work great for us, please let us know. We love to share. I will post this recipe down below in just a minute. So if you want to try it today, you can. Have an incredible day, you guys. And that's it for Meals with Melissa. Bye now.